Hi everyone. Welcome to Future of Growth, a special podcast series where we explore the dynamic landscape of Tamil Nadu's industrial development and its global impact. I'm your host Yarni and in today's episode we dive into the dynamic world of advanced manufacturing in emerging economies with a spotlight on the renewable energy sector. Our distinguished guests, Mr. Sujay Ghosh, Vice President and India Managing Director of First Solar, brings unparalleled expertise to the table. With over 30 years of experience driving growth in emerging markets and spearheading First Solar's operation in India, Mr. Ghosh is a seasoned leader in the power sector. Hi sir, welcome to this special podcast on Global Investors Meet. And the first question that comes to everyone's mind is why Tamil Nadu? So, uh as a high volume semiconductor manufacturing company uh when we looked at uh, investing in india this is a green field location for us right and uh, there were a couple of uh, criteria which we had for uh, location uh, of the project number one was we needed proximity to a major seaport because we are going to deal with glass solar panels are made of glass predominantly and so whether we are importing glass to make panels or we are exporting finished goods uh, access to a port becomes important the second thing was about having infrastructure for establishing high volume production uh, which means good quality power permitted sites uh, and availability of water the third uh, criteria for us was uh, availability of talent pool especially because we had a goal of having uh at least 40 to 50% gender diversity in our workforce and uh and obviously uh we also looked at uh the investment policies the industrial policies in the states uh what are the incentives at play um, and then generally the 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 political leadership uh in the state around their ambitions to grow sustainably and uh with all those factors in mind we eventually z- Uh, selected Tamil Nadu uh, and we were very happy for that for simple reasons you got three major ports near Chennai Sri Perambudur is a very well developed industrial hub it's actually called the Detroit of India and uh, because of the presence of high volume manufacturing in auto and electronics you got a very mature industrial ecosystem which we can uh, we can build upon right as a greenfield facility now that you have answered why tamil nadu can you also tell us how the tamil nadu government facilitated the sale for a greenfield site even within our company uh, this was kind of the shortest uh, in which we were able to complete a new factory uh, bear in mind that we operate factories in vietnam uh, malaysia and the us and uh, so uh, this kind of speaks volumes about uh, the availability of the ecosystem and the ease here improvement which the state and the country has done in terms of ease of doing business to facilitate uh, you know manufacturing investments of the scale and nature we kind of looked at uh, the state government's vision around uh, sustainable development and it kind of aligned with what we were trying to do uh, once we selected the site our immediate priority was to get the project up and running in a time frame which we had committed to our investors this was during the back half of the covid uh, in which we did all this investment and uh, we were extremely surprised and pleasantly surprised that not only were was everything in terms of our incentives discussion to land selection to uh, you know securing all of our permits everything was done online uh everything was done remote and uh you know uh, i think this is a great template for us as we look at how do you improve the efficiency of these processes in terms of the ease of doing business for the state for the country right um and uh, we got all of our pre construction permits uh in about 35 days uh we were uh, we did ground breaking and in 19 months from the time we did ground breaking uh we had produced our first panel in in the factory so with your extensive background in the power sector how do you see the role of advanced manufacturing in shaping the future of renewable energy particularly in emerging economies like india 
Well, I think uh, I'll speak for the solar industry. Um, it's extremely important. Uh, what has happened in this industry is, on one hand, you've got uh, solar becoming the mainstay energy resource for most economies, right? Especially between the two tropics, given that it's the cheapest form of electricity on the grid today. Uh, so, as you look at India, for example, uh, we have committed to having 50% of our energy from renewable sources by the end of this decade, which implies that as we enter the decade, whatever incremental capacity we build will mostly be renewables. There'll be a bit of coal, but that's mostly the new coal will replace the old coal plants, which are relatively old and inefficient, right? But the new capacity which comes on as you look at growing the economy at about 6 to 8%, so you're looking at energy demand growing in the same, uh, same numbers, uh, you would look at from going from 450 gigawatts of current capacity to about 1,000 gigawatts of capacity by the end of the decade, the balance is really coming mostly led by renewables. And within that basket, it's led by solar simply because of economics. Uh, and this story will play out in most other economies. But on the other hand, the supply chain for solar photovoltaics is consolidated in China. And China is using this as a monopolistic approach, as, as you look at trade, as you look at uh, energy security. And so it's very important for countries like India, for their energy security and energy independence reasons, to not rely on a foreign source for building solar projects and connect the demand of solar energy to industrial policies and look at how the manufacturing of these uh, modules and the associated equipments can happen so that we are truly self-reliant as a country in this in this sector. So now that we've spoken about advanced manufacturing in the renewable energy sector, can you tell us how different is or how First Solar differentiates itself? Yeah, so First Solar is uh, part of uh, the top 10 global manufacturers of photovoltaics. Uh, they are called the Solar Module Super League of Manufacturers. In that, there are eight Chinese companies. We are the only company in the Western Hemisphere. And then there is a, a company which is uh, of Korean origin. And so that gives you a sense of the solar photovoltaic industry where China's dominance and monopolization of the whole supply chain is, is something which is unparalleled in some of the other industries, right? And so what sets us apart in the PV technology space is that we're completely differentiated in terms of use of semiconductor, in terms of our supply chain, in terms of our manufacturing process. We're completely different and we have zero dependencies on the whole polysilicon value chain, uh, which is currently consolidated in China. So China controls uh, through through Chinese manufacturing companies about 95% of the global value chain of photovoltaics simply because most of the solar panels use uh, silicon as a semiconductor material. First Solar's technology doesn't use silicon. We use an alternate compound called cadmium telluride and uh, that's actually extracted not from the ores but from the smelting process of copper and zinc. Uh, cadmium and tellurium are as found as impurities in, uh, in the uh, copper and zinc uh, ore. And as the, uh, as the smelting process creates pure copper and zinc metal, uh, we extract uh, the elementary cadmium and tellurium, compound it to make cadmium telluride, and that's what we use uh, as the semiconductor uh, in our technology. The second differentiation is around the manufacturing process. So unlike uh, the polysilicon value chain where you create silica to silicon in very large energy intensive silicon refineries, and then there is uh, the ingot and wafer process where you essentially uh, create the wafer, uh, and then there is a cell and module. So there are four distinct uh, different processes which could be located at the same place or it could be differently located. Our philosophy has been solar under one roof. That's how the founders of the company visualize the technology. And uh, we make everything from the semiconductor to the finished module in one integrated process under one roof in one location, right? And that sets us apart 
from the rest of the well, you know, the 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 industry again in terms of how the module is manufactured. Uh, we take a piece of glass and we deposit a very thin layer of uh, semiconductor, uh, and uh, that is then uh, cut into cells on the glass, and then it's it's uh, finished off as a solar module, right? And so this whole process, it takes about four and a half hours for that piece of glass to convert into a module. And in this factory in Sri Perambadur, we're going to produce 16,000 modules a day, right? Which means every five to six seconds, a panel will come off the line. Uh, that kind of gives you an idea of the, the high volume and the scale of this production. So you're talking about producing anywhere between four and a half, uh, sorry, anywhere between nine to 9.5 megawatts of solar capacity every day from this factory, right? Uh, <clears throat> the third thing which uh, differentiates us is our component supply chain. Uh, the, the component supply chain which we use is perhaps the most easy to localize because we have no dependencies on silicon, right? While most of the uh, peer group industries uh, are constrained by securing the silicon supply, which currently is in China, and uh, the constraints, either you depend on them or you have to invest a lot of capex to establish those facilities. And it takes time, it takes money, and it takes a lot of uh, efforts. 85% of our modules is glass. And so for us, the semiconductor uh, is the least used material in our module, and uh, which is why, if you see, uh, as we've established this factory, we are already starting off with a localization of about 50 to 60 percent in terms of our cost being sourced from India. And uh, as we go forward, we're going to keep ramping up on that uh, on that localization, simply because the components which go into our module can all be found and manufactured in India uh, without any major constraints. So while we are talking about advanced manufacturing and also, you know, semiconductors, renewable energy. The question always comes to one's mind is about water, you know, because there is a thought that fresh water is required for these industries. Can you throw some light on this, sir? This is very unique to uh, this location around Sri Perambadur uh, and the industrial clusters around Chennai, is that uh, the primary water source for us is actually tertiary treated RO water, which comes from the recycling of uh, wastewater of Chennai. And uh, given that semiconductor manufacturing is water intensive, uh, you need assured supply of water. We felt that uh, instead of depending on groundwater or river water, or investing in an expensive desalination plant, uh, if you're going to tap sea water, uh, this source is pretty unique. Um, the recycled uh, uh, wastewater source will never run out as long as we have people living in Chennai. And the quality of the water and the infrastructure in terms of the pipelines uh, by which the water is pumped to the industrial estates uh, was pretty good. And so all of that combined for us to look at uh, uh, building this project in, in, in Sri Parambadur. Uh, once we uh, decided and, and, and zoned in on the land, the other very important step for us was we, got, we had to get the project up and running in a time frame which we had committed to our shareholders and our investors. So from a water standpoint, uh, having a, a very assured and unique uh, source of water which came from the recycled uh, wastewater of the city of Chennai uh, assured us of, of long-term reliable water supply. That's really interesting to know. Uh, in developing a globally competitive PV manufacturing operation from India, what strategies are being implemented or rather, how do you ensure quality and innovation in advanced manufacturing processes? You know, I mean, this uh, the reason why First Solar uh, <clears throat> is where it is, is because of innovation. That's in our DNA. Uh, we innovated with uh, alternate material. We innovated with a completely different manufacturing process. We innovated with a product design for circularity when circular economy was not the buzzword. Uh, so we have been always innovating uh, because in this industry, uh, when the technology is relatively mature, uh, unless you innovate uh, on technology, uh, it's very hard for you to uh, you know stay in the game, right? 
uh, and uh, we will continue to do that. Part of uh, our innovation uh, journey is all about, first is about taking risks. Uh, you have to take bets, uh, all the bets don't come off, but uh, there has to be, First Solar has got a very structured process of evaluating new technologies, uh, looking at doing, um, you know, initial pilots, and uh, if it fails, we fail fast instead of, uh, you know, uh, continuing with that journey. Uh, the other part of uh, our innovation is also leveraging the Academia Industry Connect. And uh, we've done that, uh, we continue to do that in the United States uh, with very deep uh, academy industry connects with uh, certain universities where there's primary research going on. Um, and as we've now come into Tamil Nadu, uh, we're very proud to say that we've uh, entered into a very initial uh, understanding with the IIT Madras Research Park uh, to look at uh, how do we create uh, innovative uh, uh, products uh, a on the module itself, looking at uh, new materials, looking at uh, you know uh, ways and means of uh, improving efficiencies on our uh, on our resources, but also looking at the overall ecosystem because the solar panel manufacturing is one part of it. Having it delivered, installed, and and working for 25 years in the field uh, is another part of the whole ecosystem. Uh, discussion and we're working with uh, IIT Madras on uh, things like how do you use uh, less amount of water or robots to clean modules. Most solar panels are are installed in places where there is no water uh, because that's when the sun shines the brightest and modules do gather dust and then the challenge is how do you clean them and make sure that they're producing the energy which they're rated for. Uh, so we're looking at ways and means to handle modules in the field uh, so there's a lot of uh, initial engagements which we have uh, started discussing with the IIT Madras Research Park and the ecosystem of uh, research which is there in Chennai and in the country generally. So you did mention that immediately we may not reach the goal of 100% shift towards renewable energy sector. But what are the challenges that needs to be mitigated and that you see towards this shift happening? Well, I mean, the challenges to scale renewable energy in any country is the ability to develop flexible grids. Because currently the grids, as I said, due to the nature of, very nature of renewables, which, uh, you know, unless you're able to harness the power of storing that energy and then dispatching it when the grid needs it, when the demand is there, rather than putting the energy on the grid when it's being generated. So there's a subtle difference in that. That is one constraint which I think the industry as a whole is working on. On manufacturing side, I think uh, challenges which we see and which we'll continue to see uh, are around two things, right? Uh, and I'm not talking specifically around Tamil Nadu, but generally A is the quality of infrastructure, right? Uh, and logistics. It's improved a lot over the last 10 years. Are we there yet? Perhaps no our grids still need to be more reliable because semiconductor manufacturing, the equipment, is extremely, extremely sensitive to power quality. A one millisecond dip in the power can cause a trip which can cause 20 to 24 hours of downtime, meaning you lose like crores and crores of revenue. Same thing with water, right? As we look at more and more solar manufacturing, semiconductor manufacturing come, come into the country, uh, assured availability of water is extremely important. And that builds also into the theme of then recycling the water, right? Uh, as a country, we don't do a good job of uh, recycling water. Uh, Chennai, perhaps the Chennai Metro is one, one example uh, where some state and some municipality has taken leadership to do that. And the result is you get investments. People like us come in and say, well, I mean, this is a, as good a water source as any, and let's start, uh, you know, uh, investing in a place where the water supply is available instead of depending on river water or uh, underground water, which is completely unsustainable. So thank you for joining us on this insightful journey into advanced manufacturing in emerging economies. Sir, I wish you the very best on behalf of our listeners and people of Tamil Nadu, considering this is a sector we're all keenly watching especially because this is going to provide us an alternative for all our power requirements. Thank you listeners for joining us on this special podcast on Global Investors Meet. Uh, I'm sure you found this conversation valuable and 
gain new perspectives on this sector. Stay tuned for more engaging discussions with industry leaders. If you have any questions or topics you would like us to explore in the future episodes, please feel free to reach us. Do stay tuned for more engaging discussions with industry leaders. So until next time, this is Yarni signing off on Future of Growth. The Future of Growth